Hal knocks on the door loudly. Hatch, the old man, comes to the door, and Hal informs the old man of the death of his only child. Hatch says nothing in response and slams the door. At this point, the narrator and Hal <coughs> stay there, silently listening and watching, waiting for something. And what that something is reveals itself as they wait. The old farmer and his wife come outside in their pajamas to the field which had been plowed that day. The narrator and Hal conceal themselves, quote, we got to where we could see what was going on without being seen. The story then gives us these two lightning struck paragraphs. It was an incredible thing. The old man had got a hand corn planter out of the barn and his wife had got a bag of seed corn and there in the moonlight that night after they got that news they were planting corn. It was a thing to curl your hair. It was so ghostly. Hal and the narrator are in effect spies. As writers, we're all spies. Let's get over any guilt for that. <laughs> Hal and the narrator see this scene together, so it's not a solitary hallucination. There's a community of seers. It seems important to me that in this scene, the old man and his wife do not know that they are being observed. People act differently when they know they are being looked at. An element of performance tends to corrupt behavior whenever we know other people are watching us. We begin to act for them. When you catch the sight of some action and catch it by accident, you often feel privileged. You've been admitted into a place of secrets and privacy. Finally, the image of Hatch and his wife is what Irving Massey would have called a widowed image. That is an image that's been detached of the meaning that was once married to it. What we have are visions without any paraphrasable content and without any insight to provide a foundation. The old couple, the two of them are planting, but they're also doing something else. Taking it symbolically takes us in the wrong direction. And the image of the old couple planting corn is not, I think, symbolic. I can hear my inner high school English teacher <laughs> telling me that the corn planting is a ritual symbolizing how life goes on, how seed is planted in the ground despite everything, yada, yada, yada. And my reply is no, 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 no. <laughs> For me, the image resonates because mystery adheres to it, because its meaning escapes me because it's not what I expected, and yet because I know that Hatch and his wife are a farm couple, it seems absolutely right. It's inevitable and surprising and mind-haunting. As Robert Hass notes, images haunt. This feature of Sherwood Anderson's writing fascinated the poet Donald Justice. In his essay on the prose sublime, which is almost entirely about Anderson's work, Justice put it this way. In Anderson, there is not the push toward meaning. The rendering exhausts the interpretation. It has everything the Joycean epiphany has except for the crucial flash of understanding. Such passages seem hardly to bother with understanding at all and instead give us unspoken connections, unnameable affinities. I just love that phrase. Unnameable affinities. A tissue of association without specified relations. I think justice is right. Such associations do not increase our understanding so much as set limits to our understanding. 